All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. Doesn't look like anyone else is trickling in. Uh, first of all, I appreciate everyone's time today. We have about 30 minutes scheduled. Uh, I promise I won't go over and I'll be cognizant of that time, but I do appreciate you spending some time talking about some advanced distribution methods and really, as the title says, mastering your inventory. Uh, we're gonna go through some more advanced stuff today. Not so much of just the basics, but we will highlight on some of those basics. So if you don't know, my name is Seth Bike. Uh, I am an account executive here at Scanco. I've been here for uh, a little over five years. I work hand in hand with Ross, Chelsea, and a couple other people here. So if you see my name, um, you may be familiar with my voice or yeah, you've talked to me before. Just to kind of set some of the ground rules, today's agenda is going to uh, consist of really five main parts. Uh, we're gonna highlight, for those that don't know who Scanco is, just talk about us a little bit. Uh, I'll be very brief on there, and then we'll jump into the content. We're gonna talk about picking and different ways that we can pick. We're gonna talk about some of the put away processes, some of the material handling. Maybe you're doing it one way, maybe you could be doing it a different way. We'll talk about on the water receiving and how pallets and containers are going to play a part of that. And then the last piece is gonna be catch weight, and then we'll wrap it up for some questions. With that said, if you do have any questions that come to mind as soon as you do it, I typically recommend get those questions in right away. That way you're not kind of forgetting at the end. We aren't gonna be doing any demoing today, so it's gonna be kind of more just uh, talking about topics, but if you do wanna schedule a demo with me or just a brief conversation to dive into any of these topics in more detail, feel free to reach out to me after this. I'll leave my contact information. So if you don't know who Scanco is, I'll be brief. Uh, we are a barcode automation company that has been in Sage since 1989. It's a fancy way of saying we are a scanner company that's been here for 30 plus years. We don't just do barcode automation. We have a manufacturing suite. We have a sales platform. We have a spa or a, or a purchase agent uh, piece. So we have a lot of different solutions that kind of fall into a one-stop shop, we like to say, for anything that's Sage 100. We also have a Sage 300 product. Sage 500, and we have a manufacturing product for Sage Intact. So what that means is we are really deeply embedded with Sage. All of our software works hand in hand. It's all real time and it, none of it's an overlay or none of it's kind of built over top. It's all built in. I like to add this picture here. We are relatively known in Sage. You probably have heard of Scanco, but as far as the company, we are a small family. You know, we really do, we get together. This is to celebrate a couple of uh, Ross's and Cody Smith's, if you're familiar, 10 year anniversary here. So we have people that have been here for a long time and that are dedicated to the success of the company. And then here's kind of a timeline of that particular history. So you can see 1989 in 2021 is as recent as that. We acquired CI Global. And then if you have not seen, we actually partnered with PDI for oil and gas to do a WMS solution for their PDI platform as well. So we are continuing to innovate even to this day. But let's dive into it a little bit. Um, I actually, I'm gonna back, I'm gonna. There we go, somehow my, my headset muted. So if what I was describing here is picking made easy, if you are a company right now that is not using Scanco, you have some process in play with paper and pencil, I just wanted to give you kind of an idea, start with the basics of why you should think about utilizing a scanning system. They're probably pretty obvious here. One, using paper and pencil, you're, you're really, prone to human mistakes. You're not having any validation. Your accuracy is judged based off the performance of the individual writing it down. What about your efficiencies as well though? What do I mean by efficiencies? Well, how fast are you getting that paperwork into your Sage system? So how fast are you physically walking it over to somebody for them to enter it into accounting to say, hey, I pulled from this location so that we're not walking to that location again and saying, hey, it should be here because my Sage system is 
24 hours delayed, two hours delayed, an hour delayed, however long. So it's gonna streamline that entire process and allow you to just be more accurate and overall improve that particular um, function of your business. And then your better inventory level. So rather than just saying, hey, I think my inventory is good, it should be good, you're gonna have real-time data coming with using any kind of scanning solution to just say, hey, this item was depleted from this location. We only have, we have less than 500 on hand. We need to order it. You're gonna be able to make business decisions much quicker because you're using a solution like this. So I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here, so bear with me, and talk a little bit about single orders versus multiple orders. So what do I mean by this? So what I went over just now is just, hey, I'm a company, basic stuff. I'm using paper and pencil. Now I wanna talk about if you are actually thinking about or currently using some kind of barcoding system. And there's two real ways to pick here, and we can do order picking. So if I, when, I be, when I reference order picking, I'm saying single orders, one at a time. And what this is good for is companies that are using, hey, I have LTL, we just need to get this loaded. We don't need to have to worry about grouping orders. Low volume, I just have you know, seven, eight, 70, not, no crazy number on my sales order. I just need them to be able to pick and get it quickly. So it's really good for those smaller companies, smaller pick sessions, as well as the smaller orders to say, hey, I'm gonna do a directed pick, but it's gonna be at one order at a time. So the scanner is going to walk you up. It's gonna say, hey, go grab this item and go stage it in this place for us to consolidate and pack it up. It's really good for small orders. But what if you're a company that's growing? What if you're a company that has lots of sales orders a day, high volume, you're running different kind of reports three times a day because you need to get these items out. We need to get the business running. Then we need to talk about weight picking or weight batch picking. So those are the two that I wanna just highlight here. So what do I mean by weight picking versus weight batch? Well, weight picking is allowing you to group or consolidate sales orders into a single data piece. So just one pick ticket essentially and say, hey, I don't care that these are for multiple sales orders. Let's go ahead and accurately and efficiently grab them all. So we'll grab 10 orders at a time, stage them for our shipping department to consolidate, pack them up and sort them out. Now, when I say weight batch picking, I'm saying, hey, maybe you're a company that has 600 orders and you have 60 different aisles and you have six different forklift drivers, and I need to split those 600 orders into some kind of list to say, hey, each forklift driver gets a manageable amount of orders, and I need to do this with certain criteria. So there's a ship via, and these need to go out today, or this is a specific region. These are cold product. These are, these are food items. They need to be uh, get on the truck right away into my refrigerated trucks. That's what I mean by the difference between wave picking and wave batch. Wave batch picking allows you to create those lists, segregate and split it out, get it to those drivers so we can do the same thing of grouping, but to another level. Both of these picking options are gonna be great for multiple orders, I think that one's obvious, and great for companies that already have established bin locations and established processes. If you come to me and say, hey, I don't have a real good process, we don't have locations, we're gonna say, hey, let's start with order picking or let's just start with some kind of data entry picking just to get things updated. It's really good for those large volume companies if we're pushing out a lot of product and really good for companies that have different shipping stations that we need to ship to. I'm working with a company currently that is using wave batch picking and they're doing exactly that. They have basically small packages in one side, but majority of the time their forklift drivers are running 24 seven and they don't want them to stop. So they're creating wave batches they're staging them at the end caps. The end cap people are grabbing them and moving them, but these lists are just being split daily. So those are the three different picking options that we can introduce if you already have some kind of process or you're using some kind of scanner system. But what if you're a smaller company and you're still looking for efficiency? What if, hey, Seth, I don't have this really robust process. You know, We don't have this 100,000 square foot facility but I still need to add efficiency. I need to do some kind of direct, directed picking. I might highlight 
and push you towards directed shipping then. So directed shipping allows you to skip that two-step process. So instead of doing a pick, pack, ship, it's saying, I'm going to complete the shipping data entry inside of Sage at the same time that I'm actually picking the product and depleting the bins. Now for large companies, this isn't gonna work for you because we need to make sure that we're staging it, consolidating, we need to double check. But if you're a smaller organization and you don't have as much volume, you have four or five pickers going, this may be a good way for you to start using some of those resources. So why, do, why is this important? Well, first of all, we're skipping that two-step process. And I think that one's pretty clear to everyone. So instead of me picking and staging, I'm simply walking up to that location, putting it on the truck when I'm finished, and it's creating that entry. So it's maximizing those pickers and actually using them as shippers as well. We're able to get a faster order, order out. So you're able to invoice quicker because typically if you're using a solution like this or this kind of functionality, we're probably invoicing that day and that truck's just leaving. But you're still getting some of that accuracy that you're hoping for. So you're still getting yelled at by the scanner if for whatever reason the pick is off. You're still getting yelled at by the scanner if there's nothing in that location. So you still get that feel of a pick, but you get to skip that extra step. And then ultimately, again, kind of going back to the second point, we're able to streamline that process, which leads to better business decisions whenever we're actually ordering. It all comes back to, hey, do we have enough stock for the next order. So this is a good way for the smaller companies to add efficiency that, hey, I thought I wasn't able to get, but we can with the scanners. So that's picking in a whole. And again, we can definitely talk in you know an hour long call and get into more in the, into the weeds there. But what about put away, the put away process? So I wanted to put highlight this slide because for one, a lot of the people on this call are probably using our scanners in some capacity. And they're probably just doing bin transfers right now. Hey, moving from shipping or, or moving from receiving, excuse me, to whatever that location is. It's great because we're actually updating it. We're not updating it behind or uh, an hour later when it actually, uh, updating it when it actually happens. But what if we could take that to another level? What if we could create a list based on requirements? And when I say requirements, based on space available in your pick locations or your overflow and say, hey, that list is going to go to the guns and the list is going to guide the individual where to go. And that's what a directed put away is. So direct to put away is a list that Sage creates. So we created inside of Sage based on those requirements. We assign it or push it out to the gun. And the gun says, this is where you need to go. You don't get to dictate where I'm putting product. This ultimately leads to these four points right here. First of all, misplacement of items. I can't just put it anywhere. Though I'm updating it, it can still be an overstock. But now it's saying, go fill my pick location and go put this many in here and validate that it's correct. This goes back to the inventory count. So why is that? Why does that even matter? Or why does that even coincide? Because if I'm able to update those locations correctly, I'm gonna have better counts when I'm doing those cycle counts and I'm gonna know where my product is. The double put aways, I should probably highlight this as more of me, uh, a time between picking and put away. And what do I mean by that? There comes a situation where, hey, I am putting product in a, in a bin location, but maybe 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes after, a picker comes up and grabs it. Well, if you're not using a system right now, that causes issues, and everyone probably has had that happen before. But because we are scanning that bin location and depleting it or putting product into the location at the same time, as soon as I put that product up into that shelf, the picker is now going to get that notification that, that it's actually in here and they're going to be able to pick it right away. And then eliminate the wrong items. Again, kind of going back to that next point of picking the correct items. Now, that was a lot of talk, but what about some metrics to back it up? So I pulled this from our metrics that we have, as well as some industry standards and some really uh, uh, trusted people in our industry that I wanted to talk to and specifically customers. What are some mes metrics to, uh, to back this? Well, first of all, we, we're gonna re reduce the misplacement of items by 50%. This is because we are going to actually tell them where they're going. They're not just simply gonna be able to put it where they want. And again, the system's gonna yell at them if they try to. 
But the big one is we're going to decrease those discrepancies in our inventory by up to 90%. Because we're able to actually tell it where it needs to go, we're doing a second checkpoint and we're always validating the items. This is going to help our cycle counts tremendously to make sure that when I am starting to, to order, that we're not overstocked, we're not understocked, that we have a true faith in our inventory at all times. That double put away, it's gonna save up to two hours per day. Now you may be saying, hey, you probably won't save me two hours per day. But what if I can save your receiver 30 minutes and I can save your accounting people 30 minutes and I can save someone else an hour and that equals that two hours a day. Overhead's the most expensive thing that any company typically has. So if I can save two hours a day at least, that's gonna benefit you tremendously for adding an application like this. So kind of think about that as we go on through. And then the incorrect item information. This one's a little different, but you're going to be able to validate what's actually be scanned. So one of the things that, uh, that prompted me to add this is I got a co conversation with a company a couple of weeks ago and they said, hey Seth, we keep mislabeling, mislabeling our product and we're shipping it out that way because the product says, hey, it should be this. Well, the system's gonna be able to catch that. In these particular situation, they were compound barcodes. So when it scanned, it would say, hey, this is not this particular product. Let's make sure we're scanning the correct one. So again, going back to it, just validation, validation, validation. So that's the picking, that's the put away. What about some of the advanced tracking? So the two pieces I'm gonna go over next are gonna be license plating versus containers. Now, the reason I'm gonna talk about this is because they both play a part in a software piece that we have called On The Water. On The Water allows you to do essentially vessel uh, receipts and be able to track what product is physically on the water. So why would a company need this? Um, and if you are a company that needs it, you probably already know why, especially if you're using Sage 100 right now. On The Water allows you to separate a on the water warehouse from your physical inventory. So right now you may be doing something very similar. You may be receiving product into a floating warehouse, that, that's an industry term, and saying, hey, this is my product that's coming in, and then doing a transfer into my current inventory when it phys phys is physically there. The problem is here is that we're not able to separate those GLs versus our balance sheet. And why this is important is because if you are a company that has a board, if you're a company that has auditors, you want to be able to show them, hey, this product is on the water. Here's the cost for that. Here's the product that I physically have here. So on the water allows you to do this. It allows you to essentially create two receipt of goods for a purchase order. And here's what I mean by that is when I create a purchase order that's on the water, I'm actually able to put some information that you're not able to see right now. So I can put, hey, when should this be actually come in? What are the different times? When should it hit the dock? When should it hit a checkpoint? And then I receive that into my system as an on the water item. Now throughout the life cycle of that product, I can update it, I can check back and say, hey, this should come today, this should come tomorrow, this should come next week. When it physically is there though, I'm able to do another receipt into my physical inventory. So a true receipt of goods into my inventory, I'm going to now take that product that's on the water, I'm gonna move that into my particular facility and say, hey, I'm taking ownership of this particular product. I physically have it. And we're able to do a couple of different pieces here. So first of all, we're able to allocate land and cost across an entire container. So if you are tracking a true container, maybe this container has 17 purchase orders on it. I'm able to allocate it across all 17 and say, hey, this is how much each purchase order actually cost me because it was on this particular container. Or you can just say, hey, this container cost me this much. I can receive all of those purchase orders that are on that container in at once. So I don't have to individually do it, check off, but maybe you want to be able to do that. But this is all going to be able to work with the scanner. So I'm going to be able to do all of this very seamlessly and straightforward and get you a better accurate or inventory accuracy of what physically actually came here versus what was on the water. So it's a critical piece if you're ordering from overseas to be able to include something like this in whatever capacity that looks like. And you can see I included some screenshots here on the right to give you kind of a feel of what that container receiving looks like. We can track that container number, we can see all the information on it, et cetera. So maybe I'm not just doing my on the water receiving, 
maybe I want to take this to another level and I want to track pallets as well. And so when I say pallets, I'm going to use a term called license plating. A lot of companies typically know that, that terminology, but I want to make sure that uh, I'm bridging that gap. So what is pallet tracking and what is license plating? And one thing I always like to know is when I talk about pallets, I'm not talking about something with same items, because if it's 500 pieces of a single item, that's okay. I don't really need to know every single piece on there unless it's lotted or if it's food, et cetera. I'm talking about mixed pallets. I have 17 items with a serial number. I have 60 items with a lot number and the rest are standard pallets. And I need to know with one scan, everything that is on that particular pallet. And that's what this allows you to do. It allows you at receiving to build that pallet to say, hey, those 17 serial numbers, they're going on here. Those 60 lot numbers, they're going on here. Those standard cost items are going on here. And now when I move that product, it's not, a, it's not a simple, hey, I have to scan each one. I just scan that pallet and I move it. So 3PLs, if you have a small little space that you're holding product, but you're using the ScanCo solution, maybe you need to use a mixed pallet. Maybe you need to have that ability to say, hey, I need to consolidate and put everything in here, but still have the visibility of what's going on there. Maybe you're a food company. You have lots and you have expiration dates and you have all this different level of information that you need to be able to track on there. Again, with one scan, you can see everything that's on it, but you can also move it, transfer it, stage it, and put it on hold all at the same time. Lastly, you're able to break these pallets. So if you need to break this with the scan, you can actually just say, hey, these need to all be individual items. They don't need to be in a pallet. We can do that with a scan and then we can pick accordingly as well. Now, I'll be honest, a lot of times with mixed pallets, we don't need to pick an entire mixed pallet because I doubt that that entire pallet goes onto a, an order, but maybe I need to just break that and I need to be able to pick it accordingly. We have that ability. So kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about how your inventory is actually set up. And then lastly, the variable weights. This one's very specific. So food, the food companies that are on here, or if anyone is selling product by a case or any unit of measure, but we're invoicing by the actual weight, this is where this product comes in. So it's a very specific product. It's also known as variable weight inside the Sage community or inside of the, the WMS community. But it does that. So my customer says, hey, I have five of these particular cases so of hamburgers. I don't really care what the weight is until I'm invoiced. I just know I needed five cases. So instead of your pickers needing to walk up and say, hey, I'm going to weigh this out or what's the exact uh, quantity, they can grab five cases, give it to shipping. Shipping can weigh it, enter the exact weight. So one's 41 pounds, one's 42. And at that point, you can invoice correctly. And I added an invoice here to show you how it kind of breaks it up. One point to highlight here works with GS1. If you're not familiar with GS1, it's a compound barcode that includes all the information for food that you typically need. So item, package date, lot number, receipt, date, expiration, weight, et cetera. So just kind of know if you are in the food industry and you're doing this, we have a piece that is going to help you actually invoice it out correctly so you know the weights that you're shipping. And we have about six minutes and I wanna leave some time for uh, questions. So. Ultimately, this screen just kind of shows you at a high level what a WMS system is going to do. So if you're on this call, you probably already have some kind of system or you have ScanCo system. It ultimately lets you speed up your processes by eliminating the guesswork. It lets you have visibility of your inventory in whatever capacity that is for you. So if it's traceability, if it's license plates like we talked about, if it's food and freezer, you're going to be able to see and section out all of this. And I already said it, eliminate the guesswork. If you have new employees that are coming on, imagine just giving them a scanner instead of having to give them paperwork and the scanner tells them what to do. So it's gonna help you onboard those employees faster, but eliminate a lot of errors that are happening inside your facility. How do we get started? I already said, reach out to myself. Um, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. Like I said, I'll send out my email after this. I'll be able to do what we call a discovery. So we'll kind of go through your process, what you're looking for schedule and build a custom tailored demo and that is based on your processes and a lot of times I'll even use your item numbers and then if you everything looks good the implementation and obviously a successful implementation before questions I always like to leave everyone with a quote so that we can at least have something to say hey I learned uh, this is a quote I found from the CEO of IPsoft um, tech guy myself so I'm a big fan 
Automation is not just about cutting costs. It's about gaining a competitive edge. This one stuck with me because I have a company working on a project like this to gain a competitive edge. So if you are a company looking for that, even if I can say, hey, we can ship product 24 hours faster, 48 hours faster, think about introducing one of these new applications into your facility. So this is my contact information. I will be reaching out to you, everyone, by just a quick email just to see if you have any questions, but feel free to take this down. This is my direct line. Also, I am on LinkedIn. I post quite often, so if you have any questions on LinkedIn, feel free to follow me. But with that, I'll say thank you. I'll open it up to questions and see if uh, anyone does have any questions. All right, I do have one question here. Uh, they asked, if I am a company utilizing ScanCo, is there a way to assign out my pick tickets? So uh, this, I'm assuming, has to reference the actual picking process. Uh, so the answer is yes. We actually have a dashboard piece, if you're not familiar, that allows you to assign out. Even if we wanted to assign out those splits, you assign out a pick ticket, the scanner gets a notification and then um, they'll be able to actually start see what they need to pick for the day. Uh, it says what version, uh, this is, I think, I'm assuming a new company, what version of Sage is ScanCo okay with? Um, so we are N minus two, just like Sage. So up to 2020 right now to, for any new implementations. If you do have you know, an older ScanCo solution, you're on an older version, and you want some of these add-on pieces, give us a call, we'll work with you. All right, and those are my only questions. We have about two minutes left. I'm gonna keep it open for questions. If not, again, my name is Seth Fike. I appreciate everyone's time today. Hope everyone has a wonderful day and I look forward to working with you.